Have you ever wondered what sort of brand new car half a million Philippine pesos and change will get for you? Well, apparently, you can get a seven-seater minivan with captain's shares. This is the Kaichen Honor S, and in this video, we get to drive it. Let's do this. Hello guys, I'm Reagan and welcome back to another car review. If you're new to my channel, I hope you click that subscribe button for your regular dose of Philippine automotive content. If you're my subscriber already, well sit back, relax and enjoy the show. After, you click that like button. Also special thanks to Kaichen Philippines for lending us the Kaichen Honor S to do this review. Kaichen is the commercial vehicle segment of Chinese car maker Chang'an, but we shouldn't confuse this with the crossovers being offered by Chang'an Philippines. Kaichen is still being distributed locally by Berjaya Auto Asia, who also distributes Mazda and Sangyong vehicles. Now what we have here is the refresh Kaichen Honor S, and it has a sticker price of 585,000 Philippine Pesos. Now that low price makes this uh, Kaichen Honor S uh, practically the most affordable 7-seater MPV available locally, undercutting its more popular rivals like the Suzuki APV and the base model Toyota Avanza. However, uh, despite that uh, attractive low price, uh, let's see if this Kaichen Honor S has what it takes uh, to keep up with its rivals. The front fascia of the Honor S has that crossover vibe going on for it. Unlike the Suzuki APV, it gets a hood and a nose, which means that the engine is right here, so that translates to a lesser engine noise and vibrations inside the cabin. It also gets these uh, stylish projector-style halogen headlights and it comes with this Kaichen front grille that even has silver accents here that connect all the way to the chrome accents found inside the headlight housing. Now the Honor S also gets halogen fog lights, something that its more uh, popular rivals cannot even boast of. Now when you put it all together, the front clip of this Honor S has that, uh, as I mentioned, crossover vibe to it and it looks uh, more expensive than what its sticker price would suggest. When it comes to the side profile, well, the design of this Honor S gets pretty dicey. From that well-designed uh, front clip there, well, the van-like silhouette of this Honor S uh, kind of throws me off. You see, uh, paired with these uh, small wheels, well, this uh, Honor S kind of reminds me of these uh, Japanese K-car vans when it comes to the weirdness factor. Now, some people might like this, uh, but personally, guys, uh, it's really not for me. I prefer my vans to look sleek, and yeah, I'm really putting it out there. Uh, the side the design of this Honor S really just doesn't float my boat. Now, this uh, side uh, profile of the Honor S also has some pretty massive feature cuts in order to meet that below 600,000 peso price level. We get beautiful side mirrors here, but these side mirrors are only manually adjustable. Now, the Honor S also gets a pair of roof rails here, but I'm not even sure if they're load-bearing. And if it were up to me, guys, I'd gladly trade those roof rails in exchange for power-adjustable side mirrors. Now, the doors here at the back are also sliding doors, which tells me that the Honor S is really more of a minivan rather than an MPV. Now, as I mentioned, it also gets tiny wheels here. These are 14-inch alloy wheels, which thankfully are not hubcaps or even uh, steelies. And these 14-inch wheels are wrapped in 18570 R14 tires. Behind those wheels, we get budget meal mechanicals. We get disc brakes up front and drums at the back. And for the suspension, we have a Macpherson set up in the front and leaf springs at the back, which tells me that, well, this uh, Kaichen Honor S is really more of a commercial vehicle. The rear end of the Honor S continues on with that van design. Now, before any of you call me out on the comments below, guys, well, I'm sure some of you will notice that the badge here says Chang'an. You see, this Kaichen Honor S is a media demo unit and it arrived here prior to that brand name change and that distributor change. Hence, we still have that Chang'an badge right there. 
So now that that's been cleared up, guys, you'll see that the rear end of the Sky Channel Nor S has the same, yes, bulb tail lights here, uh, but we do get a rear fog light here at the rear bumper. Now, I'll take that rear fog light as well as that pair of roof rails up top and uh, trade those for a set of power adjustable side mirrors. Now, when you pop open this lift gate, you'll see that it's a manual lift gate, not really a big issue. This is still below 600,000 Philippine pesos, guys. Now, when you pop this thing open, you'll see that even with the third row in use, you get a decent amount of cargo space here at the back. As you can see, my medium-sized luggage easily fits, and we even have some space here beside it for a hand carry luggage. Now, if you need more space than what this can provide for you, well, this uh, third row seats can easily tumble forward, and that would expand your cargo space to five or six medium-sized luggage. Now, here's the thing, guys. This lift gate has a little bit of a quirk. You see, the Kaichen Honor S is equipped with a centrally locking door mechanism, but this lift gate is not part of it. So if you open this thing and uh, you park your Honor S and you, you, use the, you use your key to lock all of your doors up front, make sure that you also insert your key here at the lift gate and lock this thing. Otherwise, some people might try to get inside your Honor S using the back door. Not that it's going to happen, guys, but well, it's best to be safe. The Kaichen Honor S may be an affordable people hauler, but when it comes to its engine specs, well, it definitely did not cheap out. Now, what we get here is a 1.5-liter, four-cylinder, Euro 5-compliant gasoline engine that puts out 104 horsepower and 145 newton-meters of torque. Now, the power is sent to the rear wheels via a five-speed manual transmission. Now, that rear-wheel drive configuration and the fact that we get rear leaf springs tells me that this Kaichen Honor S is a workhorse and it can also carry heavier loads. Now, the fuel economy of this thing is also pretty decent. A drive around the city returned to me 9 kilometers per liter and a relaxed highway drive returned to me 15 kilometers per liter. For the price you're paying for the Kaichen Honor S, you shouldn't really expect much when you get inside the cabin. However, this car surprised me, and in a good way, guys, in a good way. Now, it gave me the things I needed and some of the things I want uh, for that price. So that really was a good surprise. Now, having said that, guys, of course, we get fabric seats here. Now, these seats may be fabric, but they are quite comfortable. They're soft and comfortable to sit in. Now, of course, the steering wheel also is just a urethane steering wheel and we don't get any fancy buttons here except for that horn button and of course, the steering wheel also doesn't have any adjustments. Now, I'm 5'6", guys, and for my Asian build, well, this uh, steering wheel position, this driving position, it doesn't give me any problems. Now, when you look at your instrument gauge cluster here, this is my first good surprise that I found here in the SkyChen on our S. You see, we get a tachometer. In this vehicle, in a commercial vehicle that's below 600,000 Philippine pesos, we have a tachometer. It's other competitors. They're not giving you a tachometer, man. Sorry, tough luck. Now, aside from the tachometer, we also have an engine temperature gauge right there in digital format. Now, beside that, we have that fuel gauge uh, right there also in digital format. In fact, it's inside your digital multi-information display. Now, of course, we have an analog speedo here, but the fact that we get a digital multi-information display in this Kaichen Honor S, in this sub-600,000 peso vehicle, uh, it's driving me nuts, guys. It's crazy and it's crazy good. Now, from that instrument gauge cluster, we move over to your infotainment system. And guys, this is sub-600,000 Philippine pesos but we do get an infotainment system. And not just any infotainment system here, this is a 10-inch touchscreen Android head unit. It's an Android infotainment system. So all you need to do is connect uh, like a pocket Wi-Fi or your mobile hotspot in your cell phone, and you could use all Android apps found here in this head unit. You could use Waze, you could use YouTube. In fact, you can watch your favorite Reagan's Rides videos right here on this head unit. <laughs> it's crazy that we have this in a vehicle that's below 600,000 Philippine pesos. Now, it also comes with a reverse camera, guys, and the image of the reverse camera comes out here on this head unit. Now, granted, of course, the image quality will not, you know, will not wow anybody, but the fact that we get a reverse camera here, that's good enough for me, man. 
that is good enough for me plus we have that android head unit right there now from this really nice 10 inch android head unit we go down here to your climate control setup and we have a manual setup here but i love the feel of these rotary knobs uh, they feel premium they feel expensive although they are mounted on a housing that is hard plastic now from there we go down to a 12 volt power outlet here and when you open the glove box we even have this this cord which connects to a usba now what is this for well this is well if let's say you want to attach a say um a USB flash disk and you want to play some media on your Android head unit or if you want to do a, a charge your mobile phone but I wouldn't recommend using this for charging guys because it's really more of a trickle charge it doesn't really have too much juice in it now from there we have here your your gear shifter for your five-speed manual transmission a manual handbrake and a couple of cup holders which I will subject to my clean canteen test now, as you can see Despite being, well, a Chinese brand, this Kaichen Honor S has cup holders that can actually fit my clean canteen. Now, another good surprise here, guys, is the fact that despite being below 600,000 Philippine pesos, this Kaichen Honor S gives us a center armrest, a padded, leather-wrapped center armrest. That's right, guys. Whereas other competitors who are already tickling the, you know, the million peso price level, they don't even give us a center armrest, but this Honor S, you get a center armrest right here. Now, of course, guys, when you look at the cabin materials used here, well, you'd expect hard plastics and you would be right. We get hard plastics everywhere on your dashboard, on your door cards, even on the elbow rest of your door cards, even the lower part of the dashboard. And uh, when it comes to the fit and finish, yeah, we do have some um, panel gaps here and there on your glove box, on the door panels, a little bit of panel gaps here and there. But guys, this is below 600,000 Philippine pesos. I don't mind the panel gaps. I don't mind the hard plastics because Kai Chen gave this Honor S the stuff uh, that we need and some of the stuff that we want. And that is already good enough for me. Now, being more of a minivan configuration, uh, getting in and out of this uh, passenger area of the Honor S is quite easy. The step up is not really that tall. And uh, once you get inside, you'll be treated to a couple of surprises here at the second row seats of the Honor S. Now, that's not the sliding door. That's not the surprise. The surprise is rather the fact that we get a pair of captain's chairs here. Now, granted, these are budget meal captain's chairs, but I like that uh, Kai Chen went with that decision to equip the second row with a pair of captain's chairs instead of a bench type seat, because that way it would be easier to get in and out of the third row of this thing. Now at five foot six, guys, I got a good amount of space here on the second row. I'm calculating around six inches of knee room here before my knee touches the back of the driver's seat. By the way, this is my driving position. And for the headroom, man, this is a van. This is practically a minivan. So I'm getting like close to a foot's worth of headroom here. So even if you're a taller person than me, you are going to be quite comfortable in the second row captain's chairs of this Kai Chen on our S. Now, when it comes to the amenities, well, we have a good amount of amenities here. Uh, just like any uh, commercial vehicle that's been converted to a passenger type, we have a row of um, aircon vents on the ceiling here. Now, granted, these are just uh, blower types, but at least that would help keep the passengers at the back cool. We also have a uh, power door locks here. See? And we also have a large picturesque window here that also opens at the touch of a power window button. Now, I like the fact that these windows also go all the way into the doors. So yeah, you have this nice big like opening here in case you're going through a McDonald's drive-thru. Now, it's time to check out the third row seats, guys. And as I mentioned, it's so easy to get to the third row seats because of that space that we have here in the middle of the captain's chairs. The third row seat of the Honor S is pretty decent and can easily fit three adults here without any issues. The thing is, the sitting position though is a bit upright and you'll have to cross your legs like this, like what I'm doing now, in order for you to have a more comfortable sitting position. Now having said that though, the visibility here on the third row seats is also pretty good. It doesn't feel claustrophobic here because we got a great amount of headroom here, plus we have large windows here at the back that also open a little bit uh, just in case the people up front you know um, 
let out a fart and you have to let some of that bad air out. <laughs> so you could open the windows here partially at the back. Now the good thing here is because of that captain seat configuration for the second row, we have good forward visibility as well. So it doesn't really feel too cramped and claustrophobic here on the third row seats. Now guys, it's time to take this Honor S out for a spin uh, just to show you what kind of driving character it has and also to show you that this thing will not break down on the highway. Alright guys, so we're now driving the Kaichen Honor S and a first stop, well, the sitting position of this thing is pretty much, well, it's pretty upright. Uh, it feels like I am driving a commercial truck. Well, the Honor S is a commercial vehicle which explains why it feels like I'm driving a commercial truck. Now having said that though guys, uh, the visibility of this thing is really, really good. We've got a large windshield up front, we've got a large side windows here, uh, such that yeah, it would be quite easy to pilot this thing uh, as long as you kind of know how to drive well a commercial truck. <laughs> Now when it comes to the steering feel, well, the steering feel of this thing is pretty light and uh, that kind of surprised me guys considering that this is a commercial vehicle in a sense. It has a really light steering feel, although yeah, we do have some good feedback in it. Uh, I believe this is a hydraulic uh, power assist system. I don't think this is an electric power assist. Uh, I'll have to consult the brochure on that though. Yeah, but it has a good and light uh, steering feel. However, as I mentioned, this is a 5-speed manual transmission and well, the clutch itself, the clutch pedal is super light. In fact, it is the lightest clutch pedal that I've ever um, put my left foot on. Now, the problem with this uh, clutch pedal though is that the engagement point is pretty high. Uh, so that means that it's going to be a bit of a challenge to, you know, to, to drive this thing because of that high clutch engagement point. Now the good thing there is uh, Kai Chen in the Philippines confirmed with me that you can adjust the clutch engagement point to make it a little bit lower. So if I'm the one who's going to drive this thing on a regular basis, I will adjust that clutch engagement point uh, to make it easier you know, to drive this thing. Now when it comes to the acceleration of this thing, well I was quite surprised because uh, going around town, it has a peppy little engine and the acceleration response is there and I was quite surprised because normally these uh, commercial vehicles, they don't really have that uh, good uh, response when it comes to, well, to acceleration. Uh, but this uh, Kaichen Honor S, yeah, it responds pretty well to my gas foot. However, as we're driving here in the highway, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm kind of bringing the volume of my voice up already because as we're going at 80 kilometers per hour here, yeah, the engine noise makes its way here inside the cabin. Now that tells me that uh, for less than 600,000 Philippine pesos, you are not getting enough uh, sound insulation between that, uh, well, in that engine firewall and this cabin. So yeah, I could hear all of the noise, all of the noise <laughs> of the engine coming inside this uh, Honor S cabin. Yeah, and this is the fact that we also have only five gears here, five forward gears, so yeah, I'm on fifth gear now. I'm at around yeah, around 85 kilometers per hour and my, uh, my tachometer is at 3,000 RPM. So that also explains why this thing is uh, pretty noisy. Now, if you will forgive that uh, pretty loud engine noise and uh, a bit of that wind noise that comes into the cabin, well, you'd be, you'd be quite surprised in a good way uh, that this uh, Honor S also has a pretty decent ride. Despite having leaf springs at the back, well, it doesn't get jittery. And uh, yeah, granted, we are on a nicely paved asphalt road here. So yeah, the ride is smooth. I don't have a load at the back. Uh, it doesn't feel like I'm driving a truck, uh, despite the fact that this is a commercial vehicle. So I also drove it around the city. I drove it on uneven roads, on uh, cement uh, roads in the city. And yeah, it, uh, it didn't feel bouncy, guys. It, in fact, it felt uh, pretty comfortable. Overall, guys, this uh, Kaichen Honor S, uh, pretty much surprised me because I really wasn't expecting too much because of that price level. I mean, for 585,000 Philippine pesos, yeah, I wouldn't really expect that uh, this thing would even drive pretty well. Now, the thing is, yeah, it doesn't drive well for modern standards, for like 21st century standards. But you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the Toyota Light Ace that I learned to drive in 
oh, way back in the 90s. It has the same visibility. It has the same um, like engine character, that uh, driving character. So, you know, this Kaichen Honor S would be a pretty decent vehicle to, to learn how to drive if you want to drive a uh, five-speed uh, manual transmission. So, yeah, it has that uh, nice quirky character to it. And uh, despite the fact that it's below 600,000 Philippine pesos, well, the fact that we get the cold air conditioning, a really good Android head unit here. And we've been going on this highway for quite a while now, guys, but we're not, you know, we're not breaking down. We're not falling apart. So yeah, this Kaichen Honor S, for the price you're paying, it's a pretty good deal. For 585,000 Philippine pesos, I was expecting that the Honor S would be cutting a lot of corners in order to deliver seven seats in a brand new car. Now, what I didn't expect was the level of kit that we're getting in this thing, uh, despite the price. It also drove pretty well and didn't really fall apart when I took it out on the highway. So for the family who's looking to upgrade from a scooter or public transportation to something that's bigger, more comfortable, and can fit the entire family, well then, the Kaichen Honor S sure delivers more than what you bargained for. Thanks for watching.